Hi guys, it's Mary. It's Saturday night um, and I'm going live just a little bit early because we're doing a bit of experimenting with Facebook and one never knows how that's going to go. So what I'm trying to do is share this video with another Facebook group. This is practice for our stamp uh, world card making day event next Saturday. So hang on just a second. Let me get over on the computer off to the left side here and see if I can figure it out. Just one hot minute, okay? So just, you know, mer oh, I see people are already joining. Hey, Julie, thank you for joining. All right, let's see, I'm gonna hit the share to a page button. And the page I'm going to manage, say something about this. Okay, that's that, posting as that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Share in a page. There we go. Share in a group. Sorry, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. So, hang on just... Oh, group. Okay. Ankin. Oh, I see. Okay. Hang on, guys. Sorry for the dead air. That's not good. That's never a good thing, but I'm not really sure. Copy. Let's try that. Let's see what we can get. Let's see if that goes. Oh wait, maybe I can try this. Because it's not liking that. Sorry guys. Hmm. Okay, well this maybe isn't going to work, so I'm going to maybe stop attempting to do this because it's probably annoying. Hang on just a minute, guys. I want to make this work. I really do want to make this work. Hmm. Let's see if that's actually is a group. Closed group, yeah. Incan World Card Making Day. October 5th. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's not really working. Alright, uh, Amy, if you're on we're gonna have to work through that a little bit better sorry sorry guys we're uh so next weekend on saturday we're having this ginormous day long nine o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock in the evening world card making day facebook event there should be music can you hear it music whoa facebook event and I am doing two presentations there's going to be a bunch of us through the day going live at various times in the day and uh, doing some demonstrations and I'm going to do two I'll have one in the mid morning and then one at seven o'clock eastern time so what I was hoping to be able to do is uh, go live on this page that you're on now the stamps and lingers page and also share to the world card making day so we're going to have to work on that just a little bit Hey, Carol. Hi, Susan. Hi, Mary. Hi, Barbara. Glad you could join me. I surely do appreciate it. Um, okay, so I'm going to quit wringing my hands under the camera. I just realized I was doing that. What a dork. All right, so what we're going to do tonight is make some really, really, really cute little gift box bags. They're box bags. I call them a box bag because they're kind of like a box, but kind of like a bag. And they're very, very simple. Don't take any punch boards, which is handy since there aren't any, but it does require your Simply Scored tool. And I'm sure you all have one of these. I hope you do. If you don't, you should get one right away. So we are going to make a few of these. Let me show you what we've got. Um, we are using the Come Together DSP and the Harvest Hello stamp set with the bundled apple builder punch, which not only makes apples, it makes pumpkins, as you can see here. Uh, and if you hear thunder outside, that's because it's thundering outside, and hopefully that will not interfere with our 
internet tonight. Thank you, Barbara. Hey, Karen. Now, I saw this little bag. A friend of mine, Linda Reichenberg, did a video about this uh, a week or so ago, I think. And she also gave us one when we were at the Stamp Timber event down in uh, Macon a couple of weekends ago. And it was very, very cute. Um, it used a different it used different paper entirely so it had a completely different feel but i needed some cards for or some gift bags sorry for an event that is coming up soon so that i can gift some things and this seemed like the perfect thing so we are going to make a few of these and in fact we're going to make two tonight they'll probably be the same ones but it's really going to kind of bring home to you how very, very simple this really is. So let me set this aside. Um, I have put, what I did for the blog post for measurements tomorrow is I gave measurements for the bag, I gave measurements for the DSP panels and the tags and all of those things, but you guys need to use your own creativity and figure out which DSPs you want and which coordinating colors, and that's pretty easy to do. All right, so this is wide open. I'm teaching you a technique here. I'm teaching you a fun fold. I'm teaching you something that you can then uh, take and make your own. All right. Also tomorrow, there will be a handy dandy template, a picture of a template that you can uh, make big. That lightning was really right outside the window. There it comes. Okay, so we'll see what happens. If it gets really dark, you'll know that um, I, got, I got zapped. No, not really. Anyway, what you're going to do is you are going to cut a seven and one half by seven and three quarter inch piece of cardstock. Now, the ones we're going to make today are different than this. Look a little more like this. Oh, let me show you some of the other examples that I've got here for you. You can see this is all the same come together DSP. Okay, and then I have two more over here. So this is how quick these are. I, I just made all of these in just a couple of hours today, okay? And that included figuring out all of my colors. So they're very, very simple. This is the, um, you know, the Magnolia Lane ribbon combo pack has this and the old olive linen thread, or the mossy metal linen thread. And I don't know about you, but I go through the mossy metal linen thread 75 times faster than this ribbon so it's handy i have quite a bit of this ribbon which is which is good because it ties very nice little bows okay so let me clear my table off because now i've made a mess again uh just so you know if you're ever asked is mary a neat or a messy stamper you can know that the answer is oh for certain messy so we are going to use some um, Cajun Craze cardstock, and again, like I said, you're going to have a seven and a half piece this way by seven and three quarters, okay? And then we're going to do a little bit of scoring and folding, so let us do that. All right, the, the hardest part of this right now is being sure that you start with the seven and a half inch piece going across the top, because otherwise it's going to throw off your measurements just saying okay so our first score is at two inches it'll be a little harder for you to see this maybe I'm sorry for that the second score is at three and a half the third score is at five and a half and then the final score is at seven okay so you'll see what we have just created here is a panel, a side, a panel, and a side, and a flap to do our adhesive with. Once you have those scores done, you turn the cardstock one turn uh, clockwise, so 90 degrees clockwise, and you score at one and a half. And what we're doing now is creating our bottom. Okay, so here's the top, here's the bottom. Let's do that one more time because we're going to make two in this time. We're going to start with a score line at two inches, a score line at three and a half inches, a score line at five and a half inches, and a score line at seven. Then we're going to rotate once to the right clockwise and score at one and a half. Yes, ma'am, Roz, this is nice because depending on what you put on your tag, what kind of paper you use, this works for any occasion. 
any occasion. I'm just saying to you. All right, so now we have two bag bases ready to go. And I'm going to locate my scissors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure you are, Mary. There's a pair. There's a pair. See, I get all organized, but it, it just goes to pot. We're gonna follow my template. So um, there's multiple ways to do this. You can, you can fold now, uh, but I have an easier time cutting straight lines when I haven't folded yet. So I do my cuts ahead of time. So you'll see that there's a little rectangle right here. We're gonna first cut that out. You don't need it. Like so. That's this cut right here. And then I'm gonna cut along each of the score lines straight up to that horizontal score line. So you just created a flap. All right, we're gonna do that two more times. All right, one, two, three. And then on the uh, this little adhesive flap that we're gonna have here, I'm gonna cut a little diagonal just to cut off a little bit of bulk and to keep it from um, showing out the top. Now, let me show you what kind of an arrangement we've got here. You can see I have marked, here's our adhesive. This is the front. This middle uh, two inch panel is our front. The end two inch panel is our back. And then you have a side and a side. The flaps for the sides, we're gonna make a little triangular cut to make them be a little less bulky, okay? And that's all shown on the template. So we're gonna cut this one, and we're gonna cut this one, like that. All right, and then we're gonna cut the other half, uh, the other side flap, and there's not really a particular rhyme or reason to how much to cut, you're just cutting a little bit, how about that? Just until it feels right. Okay, so there we go. We've got one done. Wow, that was hard, huh? Hi, Vanessa. All right, we're gonna do another, the second one. We'll take one little rectangle out here. We're gonna cut each of the lines up to the horizontal line. Don't go past it. Just like that. And then we're gonna cut a little snippet off here and a little snippet off there. And then our snippets off of our side panel flaps. These are the bottom flaps that I'm playing with right now, okay? The bottom flaps. This is the actual bag, this is the bottom flap. Just like that. How easy is that? The answer that you're looking for is blowing in the wind. Also, it's very easy, Mary. Okay, now, so we're ready to go. What I have chosen for this bag is mats made from, um, what is the name that I'm looking for? Pumpkin pie. And I apparently only cut two, so I'll have to cut another one later and we may be only gonna be making one unless you can stand to stick with me while I cut the other two. Oh wait, nope, those aren't them. I was certain I was ready to go. See, I'm never ready, I'm never ready. Okay, let's look at our example. You'll see that the front panel and the back panel are both matted and the sides are not. Okay, that helps to keep the sides um, not quite so bulky, right? So it's easier to fold that down when it comes time. So let's go ahead and mat two of our pieces of DSP. And then I'll grab um, some more um, pumpkin pie here and we'll get those ready because that was just silly of me. That was just silly. See, I'm not even fibbing you. I've got a few more of these I have to make so I thought I would use up y'all's time and make two at once. So I'm just using a little liquid glue Liquid glue and tear and tape are our friends on this, this uh, particular project. Now, um, to, this is a directional DSP, okay? There's a distinct up and a distinct down. So when I put this on the bag, 
my OCDness is going to say I want it to be up, going up. So we're going to do that and make sure we do that. And if I start to not do that, just please scream through the computer. Hi, Faith. Hey, Karen. Glad you could join. I appreciate that. All right. We'll get that going. And then I'm going to find me some more pumpkin pie and get those cut real quick. Have you all been tracking that the, uh, the trimmer is starting to make its way towards us? The new trimmer. I hope you've... Uh, You've been kind of seeing me sneak peek in that. Um, I'll be able to order it come the 1st of October and start playing with it and share it with you and let you get a look at it. A look-a-see. A look-a-see. Okay, these panels are 1 and 7 eighths inch wide and 6 and 1 eighths inch long, which tells you that these panels here are one and three quarters by six, and then the mat is one and seven eighths by six and an eighth. <laughs> Duh, Mary. So it's Captain Obvious. Okay, so all I'm doing is doing the work I should have done before uh, you joined, and I am so sorry about that. I was quite certain I had everything ready. I was just sitting out in the other room, Getting the kitchen cleaned up, you know, doing fun stuff instead of my work. I feel like I'm getting a tan instead of sitting in the office. I am getting a tan. Aren't I so tan? I wish my legs would tan like my arms. I wear shorts all the time in the summer now that I'm not a, you know, yeah, now that I've lost a little weight. I walk in the morning in my shorts on the treadmill and then I wear shorts the rest of the day. And so, Although I don't spend a ton of time outside, you'd think I spent enough to at least get some color, but goodness gracious, I cannot seem to do that to save my life. I have little white legs, even with my arms all tan like that. I don't understand. It's the same skin. Why? Why doesn't it work? Any hooch. A couple of other things. Another thing coming on the first is the... Um, Christmas is here medley. It's not a medley, it's a sweet. So that's gonna be fun. I'll get that ordered and start making some samples. In fact, you might even see a sample or two at the card making event, I would almost bet. Hey, Janie, hey, Karen. Yes, legs are exactly. Uh, Faith, I hope you get back. And if I'm not, uh, let's see, we have lightning within a mile. So it's entirely possible that we will be struck. Okay, so let's talk about folding. When you're making folds, you know which way to fold to, correct? When you score, you have a indented side, a valley, and then you have a raised side, the mountain. When you fold, you want to fold towards the mountain, towards the mountain, which means that the valley side is the outside of this bag. Okay, so that is where we're going to put our panels and I would recommend because remember we talked about the up and down DSP I would highly recommend that you work with your bag with the bottom towards you and the top away from you because that makes sense in my brain if that doesn't make sense for you then please feel free to swap a doodle that okay so let's see here we go this is up I'm going to adhere this with liquid glue. Again, I'm doing all this before I fold, just because for me it is much, much easier. And I'm going to put the first matted panel on, and I'm using the, I'm putting it on that first two inch panel. That's the back, okay? Next up, I'm going to put an unmatted piece, which will be our first side panel. And I'm just going to make sure that I have up, up, and down, down. Oh, I hear actual rain. Boy, could we stand some rain. Hi, Fran. Had to leave and come back in. Where? Yeah, it's uh, Facebook and Internet. Okay, so now let me just tell you something. The first time I did this with matted, not matted, matted, not matted, I was like, oh, my goodness, that looks just awful. 
it doesn't. So just trust the process here. But what you want to do is you want to line the DSP up with the DSP that's matted. Don't, don't get sucked into lining up with the mat. Line up with the DSP. Now, true statement, is anybody going to take your bag and go, hmm, I don't know, that doesn't look right to me. I don't think that's accurate. No, they're not gonna do that, but you'll know, you'll know. Okay, next up is another matted panel. And I got a little glue there, so I'm gonna make sure it's not on there. And we're gonna do the next matted panel. So you know what the really hardest part of this whole bag is, at least for me, is making the bow. Because it's a bow on the box, not one of those fun and easy bow bows. It's an actual bow. Okay, so I've got up, 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 working so far, cooking with gas. Yay! Yeah, these are really, really easy, and they're going to hold a lot. I think... I can probably get a liquid glue in there and some candy and I think it's going to be fun. I love the little mini curvy keepsakes, but they're very tiny and really unless you only want to give a little tiny bit of candy, um, you know, that's about what they're good for. They're adorable, but you're not going to be, you know, manja with them. Okay, so there's our first bag all paneled up. Let's go quick like a bunny and do the second one. All right, here we go. I will try to yak less and glue faster. How about that? This is my promise that I may or may not be able to keep. Remember, if you see me trying to put it upside down, you yell through the computer. Did y'all see Purple Posies back? Yay! Get your purple posy, hurry quick, get it. You can get the, the ink pad, you can get the refill, and you can get the in color bundle where you get all of the ink pads. Now, if you purchased one of my in color bundles at the beginning of the, seat of the catalog, then you don't need that whole thing. You just need to make the difference with your ink pads. How about that? So y'all send me a little message um, if you would like me to reopen those in color bundles for just a couple of days, it would only be for a couple of days. But if you want that, I will reopen those in color bundles from the from the uh, beginning of the of the uh, annual catalog. Just let me know, and if that's something that enough people want, then I will do that for just a few days. All right, here we go. So far, so good. I've got. three quarters of this second one done and I'm still going up and up almost there and then we're going to put it together and you are going to see you love to ear me yak <laughs> well it's good because I seem to be a yacker who knew who knew I would be a yacker on video I guess unplumbed depths yeah Okay, here we go. And there is the, oopsie. I didn't hear any screaming, but I almost put it on upside down. That would have just eaten at me. I probably wouldn't have been able to even give this to anybody if I had done that. Oh, you guys want to see what a mistake looks like? Wait, I'll dig it out of the, I'll dig it out of the. It, when you don't do your score lines correctly, <laughs> yeah, you get this thing that becomes like a, I don't even know. I don't think that's even a shape. And I sat here looking at it like this was the second one I did. And I'm like, what in the world is the problem here? And I totally borked the score lines. So it found its way into my round file. Okay, here we go. Now we are going to burnish our um, doohickeys here. As soon as I find my doohickey by burnisher, my doohickey burnisher, just a second. Again, not a tidy, not a tidy person. Oh, they're there. I put them both away. That will teach me to put them both, put everything away. Okay, so I'm just going to burnish each of my folds. You want it to have, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be like a knife crease, but it's good to have it be, be a nice sharp, 
sharp fold and then do the bottoms. I made a few of these without cutting that little triangle out and um, it's much better with it. But I had to figure it out so that I knew what I wanted to cut before I could actually do it. You know, that's how that works. All right, so we're just gonna do the second one right quick. I love it when you can make two at a time. So one piece of DSP, one 12 by 12 DSP will make four of these little bags. So um, that means that there is one bag in a six by six sheet. You get two one and three quarters wide strips and two one and one quarter wide strips. Boom, chaka laka. So you could use the beautiful um, Feels Like Frost. You could use Night Before Christmas. Um, yeah, you could use any of those six by sixes, just easy peasy. Okay, now let's do a little tearing and taping. Back to our template. We're gonna put tear and tape adhesive on the half inch flap and we're gonna put it as close to the score line as we can. And then we're gonna put tear and tape adhesive on the flap that goes on the back panel, okay? By doing this, all of your seams will be on the back of the bag. All right, I like seams on the back of the bag. Hey, Amy, uh, we'll have to converse later because I was unsuccessful getting shared over to the uh, World Card Making Day. So maybe we can try it again at the end. Okay, any hooch. So that's how that's gonna work. So let's go ahead and put our tear and tape adhesive on. And you absolutely positively want to use tear and tape adhesive because it has the strength that you need for this kind of a project. Um, and it doesn't, it's not gonna fail you. Don't fail me now. Okay, so we're just gonna put that on the half inch piece and then we're going to put it on the flap for the back panel. Now I like to use two pieces of tear and tape here and I'll show you where to put them. Put the first one right up by the score line. Put the second one not right on the edge. I did that, like I said, I've made a few of these now today and I've learned a few things, so learn from my errors. Put it a little bit in from the edge. Otherwise, you see that you can see that the uh, bottom doesn't quite go all the way to the other end and if you if you put your tear and tape adhesive too far out, then, then you have a problem. Just, just throwing that out there. Okay, so let's put that on the other side as well, on the other second piece. I highly encourage you to use that template. Uh, it's very, it's really quite handy, actually. You'll enjoy it, and it will help to keep you straight. And you won't have to guess. <coughs> uh, can you write one for me? Uh, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I must have missed a whole thread. Must have missed a whole thread. Maybe you're talking about templates. I don't know. Okay, so we're ready to go. And the first thing you're gonna do is take the covers off of just the half inch flap piece and lay it over so it's to the halfway mark and then bring, and I like to do it this way, it just makes my brain not hurt. Bring the other piece up and just match up your scores and lines. Just take a half a second to be sure everything lines up. Give it a little burnish. And you can't see it, but my little seam is back here. So once again, that's the back, and that's why that's where we have our tape. Okay, so then just fold in your sides, and then take the uh, covers off the flap tape. And then just lay it down and make sure all of the sides line up. Peasy easy. All right. And sometimes, because it's paper, not a motorcycle, you'll see you have maybe have a little extra edge here that you don't like, just trim it. If it isn't bad, don't worry about it. If it's bad and it bugs you, trim it. So let's put the other one together and then I'm gonna show you how to make it look like a bag and not a box. 
I can pay. Yeah, I don't need to be paid in stamps. Nobody needs to be paid in in stamps in the Deathridge house. Show me the money. Okay, so I've just taken the cover off of the tear and tape that's on the half inch flap, folded it over once, so it's just at the first large fold, and then bring the other edge up to meet it and just be sure everything lines up straight across give it a little burnish and we've got what doesn't look like a bag still doesn't look like a bag it's looking like a box we'll fix that in just a second and then take the tear and tape off am i losing you there tear and tape off the bottom flat which folds in first Hmm. Okay, there we go. Okay. Fold the bottom flap, or the back flap in first, and then bring the front flap up over the top, making sure to match the edges. Now, you can see you have a nice smooth line at the front, and all of your seams are at the back. The bottom seam and the back seam are at the, at the back. Okay, watch this. All right, Jean, go have uh, some chicken marsala. That sounds yum-o. Yum-o. Jean, I'm going to gift them. We have a little event coming up in November called On Stage, and I've got about eight or nine teammates going, and so I will be providing these as little gifties. Okay, we're going to make this look like a bag now, okay? So all you got to do is just kind of push in the top, like so, bring the top together, and then you can just take your finger and push the side in. Flip it over and do the same on the other side. Okay, and then we're gonna make a, a topper and that's gonna make it into a bag. So here we go again, push the sides in on the top, bring all of the top pieces together, and then just give it a little push down the side. Remember, folks, it's paper. It's not gold, it's not titanium, it's just paper. So just make it do what you want it to do. Okay, so now we're gonna make the toppers. And you can use whatever color cardstock you want. I just think it looks the best with the same color as our mat. So I have two pieces of pumpkin pie cardstock. They're two inches wide by three inches long. I'm going to score them, oops, so sorry. Oopsie. I'm going to score them and fold them at one and a half. For those of you who are math challenged, that is halfway across the three inch line. Okay, easy peasy. Now if you were like making an assembly line and doing a whole bunch of them, I'd, you could probably make four or five at a time. So when you have your score tool out, make all of your bags, make all of your tag toppers, get it all going and then drive on to the next step. Then take the scalloped tag topper, okay, it's the one, it's not the brand new one, it's an older model. It's got the wider um, tag hole at the top. And you just slide that in and cut it and do the same with the second one. Obviously, I'm making two bags. If you were only making one, you'd only need one of these. <laughs> the Department of Redundancy, the department, Mary. All right, and then we're just gonna fold those over like that. And I do like to use a little liquid glue on this instead of tear and tape because it gives you a little wiggle room. But you don't want to put a whole lot up near the top because you need it to go, you need it to be a little bit, uh, you need that top part undone. So double check where your back is so that you don't get this far along and then, you know, mess it up. I'm not saying you would, I'm saying I would. So I check for the back about 75 times. And just lay it there at the top. What you're looking for is to be sure that it's all nice and straight and lined up on the back and that it folds nicely over the front like that okay get it in place let it set for just a second to get that glue good and tacky and then you can open it up and with your bone folder give it a little rub just to be sure it's good and adhered 
And then I like to let it set for a second and let that glue do its job. So let's do that again for the second bag. Double check for your back. Okay, here's my back. Close it up. Put the tag topper on near the top. And fold it over, be sure the sides are all lined up. That's why you use liquid glue, so you've got a, a few minutes grace there to um, make it work and make it be where you want it to be. And once it's had a second to think about it itself, reach in with your bone folder and give it a good rub. Okay, now let those set and let's make us a couple of tags, shall we? Very quick. Okay, here we go. Now, you can use whatever kind of DSP for your tags as you like. I like this wooden one and I actually used it for all of them. All right, so what I have here is a two inch by three inch piece, one for each of my cards, bags, not a card, it's bag, and I'm gonna run it back through this tag topper punch, each one of them. Okay, and then I'm going to use, um, in this particular case, because of the color scheme that I'm using, I'm using my Cajun Craze. Um, on this one, I used my Pretty Peacock Stamp and Write marker. On this one, I used Mossy Meadow. So use the one that makes the most sense with what your DSP and your color scheme is. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quick make some faux stitches, just because it adds a little bit of interest. The, the tag is quite simple, and it, this portion of the tag serves two purposes. First off, it gives a base for the pretty little pumpkin, which has our sentiment, and second, it helps to keep your ribbon on your bag. When your recipient gets it and they untie it, it's not gonna like hold it on there forever, but it will certainly slow it down enough that your, your friend can um, save it and it doesn't go Flying. Oh, it's raining pretty good. Man, we need the rain so bad. I didn't realize we were in quite the drought that we're in, but um, apparently we really are. So that'll be good. My back pond is down enough. You'd think I would have noticed that. Okay, I'm going to do the second one right quick. And there's multiple, um, multiple DSPs in this pack that you could use if you uh, run out of the wood stuff the wood design. I know that's certainly a thought of a possibility unless you buy a whole new set because I think people are really using this wood wood design a lot. I really like it. So I know I do and I am glad I had two entire packs of this DSP so that I'd have plenty to do this with. But one 12 by 12 sheet of this will get let's see let's see six that two of two wide six that way and four that way so like it'll make 24 tags so you'll get a lot of bags out of one sheet of dsp uh tags just saying just saying that was you know higher level math right there okay here we go there done dunsky, dunsky. yeah gene it's great it is really really pretty paper perfect for this time of year okay now on a piece of Wispa white, what we're going to do is we're going to stamp two of the pumpkins from the Harvest Hello. Okay, so remember you get a pumpkin, you get an apple, you get a half an apple, and you can jack o lanternize it, but we're not going to. It's a pumpkin, not a jack o lantern. And I'm going to uh, stamp it twice because I need two. <laughs> Duh. And I'm going to stamp it in Cajun Craze on some Whisper white. Okay. And I'm going to let that dry for a second. And I'm not going to put that over there like that because it would immediately doom me to never seeing it again. And while I'm waiting for that ink to dry, I'm going to take the little um, stem doohickey punch and I'm going to punch a pumpkin pie stem. Okay, from just a little scrap. I'm gonna keep that aside so I can find it at some point. Now, um, I like to pick colors that I have Stampin' Blends for, just 
throwing that out there. Uh, this one, I stamped the pumpkin in Pretty Peacock and colored with the light and dark mint macaron. On this one, um, I used uh, mint macaron as well, but I uh, stamped in Pear Pizzazz, so that changed the look entirely, right? So just figure what works the best and what makes the most sense to you. In this case, I'm gonna use my light and dark pumpkin pie to color this in, okay? So I'm gonna move pretty quick um, because it's really not very hard. I'm just starting with my light pumpkin pie blend and I'm coloring in the whole pumpkin. And because, you know, my brain doesn't work <laughs> that way, I turned it over so that I could get the other side and stay keep my hand happy. A happy hand? No, that's not a saying. Okay, and then I'm going to just come back with my dark blend and highlight the edges with it and highlight by the ribs like that. Turn it again because I'm more comfortable that way. If you're a lefty, I'll bet you're going to do this completely opposite. That's fine too. You may be a righty and do it completely different than I do which is also fine. It's your pumpkin, color your pumpkin, how you like. And then I'm coming back with the light blend and just doing some, you know, blending. All right. And that is not very scientific. It's not very artistic. My degree was in mechanical engineering, not art. Duh, painfully obvious, but it works, right? Okay, so let's do the other one real quick like a bunny. And this isn't picking up the ink because they are, one is water and one is alcohol, and so that's fine. I will caution you to let the ink dry. If you get too busy too quick, you will see some smearing, I promise, if it's still wet, which actually makes a lot of sense. Also, I would caution you to do this coloring before you stamp your sentiment for the same exact reason. If you are trying to scrub over the top of that ink with the sentiment, you do run the risk of seeing some bleeding. Not a lot, but enough that you think, oh, it bled. Huh. Okay, and then we're going to come back with the light and just do some more blending. I love blends. How many of you love blends? All those in favor of a blend combo pack for every color we have, raise your virtual hands. I know that I am wanting that very much. Okay, there we go. Yes, I'm seeing hearts. I'm taking that as virtual hands raised. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my Cajun craze and I'm going to stamp a tendril. A tendril. Tendril. Like that. And like that. And then I'm also going to stamp my Hey There Pumpkin Sentiment. Gotta love a punch because I'm about one second away from having a sentiment because I have a punch. Also, I'm one second away from getting Cajun craze where I don't want to hang tight just a second. All right, let's close this and pull out my apple builder that is going to also make us a pumpkin. Okay. Okay, there's one pumpkin. And two pumpkins. Ooh, starting to see some flashy lights. Okay, now I'm gonna use a little bit, a little bit of liquid glue right at the top of this little pumpkin. Come on. At some point, I'm going to have to acknowledge that these are maybe empty. No, can't make me. But it could be that now is the time. They could be empty. Oh, come on. Yes, okay. Well, for goodness sake. Okay, I'm going to put this aside because it's not empty. I'm just going to let it think about what it's doing. All right, here we go. 
there we go. See, this one knew better. This one knew better than to be bad. Don't be bad. Very, very bad. Okay. Now we're going to put our little pumpkin pie stem on. And we're gonna leave it like that until we get our get it on our bag. Okay, now let's talk ribbon. Now, I have probably cut too much ribbon, but I am bow challenged, so making this bow is hard, and it will it helps me to have extra ribbon. If you are not bow challenged, and you can do with less than a 30-inch piece of ribbon, knock yourself out. I simply I just can't. Okay, so here's how we're gonna make this. Uh, tag. First, we're going to take some dimensionals. Did you think I would actually make an entire project with no dimensionals? And I'm using six down the sides only of both tags. See how I've got? I don't have a dimensional anywhere in the center of the tag. Okay. Doing that on both. And while it's here and I've got it out, I might as well just put them on the back of these guys because they're getting them too. But they only get a couple, three. I'm being all frugal and stuff. And Amy, if you want to cut yours in half, you certainly can. Anybody is allowed to cut their dimensionals in half even though it is completely against the laws of nature. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, this is crazy, watch closely. Here's the front of our bag. What we're gonna do is we're going to adhere this tag to the front of the bag with the ribbon run through it. A ribbon runs through it, okay? And those dimensionals are gonna help us hold the ribbon in place with the tag. So what you wanna do is you wanna bring your ribbon from the back of the tag through the top, like so. And then you can take your dimensional covers off. And adhere it to the front of the back. And you know, if you can make it straight, that's always nice. All right, there we go. And see how that, it just flows and flows. And all we're gonna do to close it is bring the top through here like this. And the back is gonna come around like so. And then we're gonna tie the dreaded bow in the front. But I'm not gonna do that because there's no reason in tying these now because I still have to fill it with stuff, with good stuff. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my one of my pumpkins and pop him on there. Yeah, Sue, so I got gotcha. you. I know, Robbie, only six. Well, no, actually, there's six and three, so guess how many? Boom, chakalaka, nine. And then I'm just going to put that on there like so. And um, I've used a variety of, uh, I've used both the Noble Peacock rhinestones on my various bags and the Holiday rhinestones. In this case, I'm going to use a pumpkin pie rhinestone from the holiday pack and I'm gonna stick him right there and then dog you just raked my toe with your big foot then I'm gonna take a small little I'm gonna make it a little bow from linen thread like this a little tiny bow a so cute bow so cute it is just like adorable it's just adorable little bow, a little fall bow. Okay, here we go. And I'm gonna use just a little dab of glue, little dab of glue, right there on the end of the stimulator, and adhere that bow. And folks, this one's done. This one is done. I'm sorry, but I think these are cute as they can be. Okay, let's do the other one right quick like a bunny. Because that way I have two more done, which brings me to either eight or ten. I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm going to have to do another little head count. 
and you can see I just did exactly what I said not to do which is take the dimensional covers off first but that's okay I'm a trained professional I can take care of this so go up from the back to the front with your ribbon and pull it on through and you want to keep it centered between your dimensionals which you know are on the edges and then we're just gonna stick that right on make sure it's still free and we'll take the uh, back off of the ones on the pumpkin hey mr. pumpkin there we go all right and another little linen thread bow. Like a sew. Okay, there we go. Oh, look, straight dimensional. Rogue dimensional cover. Watch out, rogue dimensional cover. Here we go. Put him on there like that. And then I'll get another one of these uh, pumpkin pie rhinestones and stick it in there since I forgot it. I forgot it to do that. And there we go. And then when you do get ready, don't forget to run your ribbon through the tag. Oops, that good little guy fell off. You should always let your bow have time to think. There we go. We'll set him aside. This one's had time to think. Just make sure you run your ribbon through the tag and up along the back and then you're going to close your bag after you put something fun inside and then bring it around and make your bow here on the front. Okay? Just like that. And again, I'm not going to do it. It's like doing math in public for me. I can't do it. Not going to do it. Can't make me. All right. So that's it, you guys. Really, really easy. Some cardstock, some DSP. Let your imaginations go. You've got Halloween coming up. You've got Thanksgiving coming up. You've got Christmas coming up. And then into the new year, you've got Valentine's Day. You've got the 4th of July. We're going to have all sorts of ways that you could use this bag. I want you to hang on to this tutorial and make note. Take that template and uh, I highly recommend, if you decide to do this, print the template that's on the blog tomorrow and make your own out of a piece of printer paper okay so seven and a half by seven and three quarters two inch three and a half five and a half seven turn and one and a half boom chakalaka all right guys um i will see you next week i hope you will mark the calendar for world card making day it's going to be a great event we're going to have lots of demonstrations we're going to have lots of giveaways fun contests um it's it's going to be a good day all right so see you next week y'all have a great week Thanks. Bye-bye.